Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skogge and today we are going to take a look at the Kinematic Body 2D. In order to test this out, I'm going to prepare a scene for us so we can have something to collide the Kinematic Body 2D on in order to test all the functions relevant to the Kinematic Body 2D. So I'm going to begin by creating a control node. Just hit the plus button in the upper left corner and select the control node. I'm going to name this main and press control S to save the scene and hit the save button. When that is done, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a static body 2D. And this is going to be the floor that I'm going to slam the kinematic body 2D on. So in order to make it collidable, I'm going to create a collision shape on it. I will also need to see something, so I'm going to add a color frame and select that. With these two made, I'm going to drag the static body 2D by selecting W and drag the entire node to somewhere in the middle here. And then I'm just going to drag the um, entire frame by selecting Q to change to select mode all the way to the sides. Then I'm going to select collision and create a new rectangle shape 2D and then drag that as well. I'm going to press W to prevent scaling it. There we go. That's good enough. So let's begin by adding the kinematic body 2D. You may ask, when would you want to use a kinematic body 2D? Well, it is commonly used for creating a player character. And the difference between the kinematic body and the static body is, well, the static body is supposed to be static, immovable. The kinematic body is not. It will allow you to set your own physics, your own laws of nature. Unlike the rigid body, which has physics built into it, so it will make it easier to just drag and drop objects in the scene that you want physics enabled in. However, with the kinetic body 2D, you will need to handle all the physics manually. It will not collide with anything else, unless you tell it to do so. And let us take a look and see what the kinematic body 2D have to offer. On the right side here, in the spectre, we don't have much just directly relevant to kinematic body 2D. We only have collision properties to change here, which is margin layers and masks. So let's go into the documentation and take a look and see what the kinematic body 2D has to offer. Just select script, search help, and let's search for kinematic body 2D and double click the class. Here we see a lot of public methods we have access to. Get Collider, Metadata Shape, Velocity, and so on. And we're gonna take a quick look at each and all of them. And because we are only focusing on the Kinematic Body 2D, I'm not going to focus so much on the layers and mask. That will be done in a separate video, and if that is out, I will try to remember putting it in the description below, or in the upper right corner as a little pop-up thing that YouTube now has, that, so because we can't, <laughs> we can't use annotation now, unfortunately. Kinematic characters. Kinematic body 2D also has an API for moving objects with a move method. While performing other collision tests, this makes them really useful for implementing characters that collides against the world but don't require advanced physics. So for example, I would prefer to use a kinematic body 2D if I were to create a top-down game, 2D game. Or even a platformer. So let's play around with this and take a look and see what they do. So I'm going to right-click the kinematic body 2D and I'm going to attach a script to it. Because we are going to make it move downwards towards the static body 2D. So I'm just going to create a kinematic body 2d.gd script and hit create. Here I'm going to remove the code and we are going to take a look at each and one of the functions, almost in order. But before I do that, I will need to enable processing. So just right inside ready, set process to true. And underneath there, we're going to create a new function called process delta. And delta is the time between when this runs. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make it move. And this is a relative movement. So if I were to write move and then a vector two, and then move it down by one pixel. What's gonna happen now when I hit play is, we're going to take a look and see the kinematic move down. However, before we actually do that, we will need to add a sprite to it so we can actually see it, because now it's just invisible. So let's right click the kinematic poly 2D, let's attach a shell node, and let's find the sprite. Double click that, and let's go on the right side here, and let's load a icon, PNG. So now we can actually see this. However, we still need a collision body for this, because there is no collision body <laughs> to this, so we need to create that. So right click the kinematic body 2D, add shell node, and let's add a collision shape 2D. With that selected, it's gonna tell you that it doesn't have a shape yet, so let us create that shape by selecting null and load rectangle shape 2D. And instead of dragging and trying to make it fit the size of this sprite, knowing that this sprite is 64 by 64, I'm going to edit this rectangle shape by selecting edit right here, and then I'm going to manually enter 32 and 32. Now these are the width and height from the center and out. So now it will be a total of 64 times 64. And let us now hit play and take a look and see what will happen. It's going to move down one pixel per process and it's going to stop there. The move will move this amount each time this runs. However, it will not move through other collision objects. It will stop. So let's take a look at the next function, and that is going to be move 2. 
And the way move to works is, this is absolute position, meaning this is not relative. You will actually need to get your current position and then append a movement. So if I were to add 0 and 1, this would have the same effect as this one. So if I were to comment this out now and hit play again, it's going to do the same thing. And of course, it's going to stop when it hits a collision object. Now we're going to take a look at the get collider. If we take a look at the public methods again, we have a get collider that returns a variant. And that collider is whatever object you collide with. Now that, in our case, is going to be the static body 2D because there's nothing else to collide with. However, if you were to hit another body, you would get that. So let's try it out. Let us print the get collider. Let's hit play again. And let's take a look and see what happens when we enter the bottom here. And now we have a static body, it prints out, which is this one. Now the reason we're getting errors is because we're not checking whether or not we are colliding with something. We're just trying to get whatever we are colliding with. And because we haven't been colliding with something until we actually hit something, we're getting a lot of warnings. So in order to fix that, all you have to do is, on top of there, we're going to if is underscore colliding. And if that is true, we're going to perform all the other actions inside here. And as you guessed, this will only return true when you hit something. So if we now hit play, we're not going to get any errors until you actually hit this. And actually, you're not going to get any errors at all. <laughs> Okay, next up, let us take a look at the Collider metadata. So honestly, the only use I can think of this right now is to know which cell position in a tile map. And if you don't know what that is, take a look at the video about tile map, which may or may not be out by now. Probably not, but if it is, I will do my best to put it in the description below. And if I haven't, and you're watching this by now, comment in, on this video to let me know that I haven't added that video, if it's out. Or if it isn't, remind me to do it. <laughs> And because we are no metadata on the static body 2D, if I were to hit play, nothing is going to happen when we hit this. So let's continue and take a look at the get collider shape. The get collider shape returned index of the collision shape you have collided with, meaning if this static body have multiple collision shapes, if I were to duplicate this by pressing Ctrl and D, and then move this up by pressing W and then just moving up a bit, the ID of this W collision is going to be 1, while the collision is going to be 0. And it doesn't matter what order it's in, whichever order you add them in is going to be the index. The W is still going to be 1 now, if I were to hit play. It's going to print 1 when it hits. And if I now were to undo that and just remove the W and hit play again, we are getting 0. So this is a neat way of taking control of whatever collision body you have hit if you want the different effects. So now we're going to continue to the get collider velocity. And as you may have guessed, this will return the velocity of the collider. Now because our static body has no velocity, it is not moving anywhere, this will return a vector 2 with 0 and 0. However, if we were to hit something that did move, we would actually get the velocity of that body. Next up is the collision normal. The collision normal will return the surface normal of the body you have collided with. Meaning, if I now were to hit the static body 2D, we will get a vector that points upwards. If you don't know what a surface normal is, it is an arrow that sticks directly up 90 degrees from whatever point you were to hit on a surface. So if this were to be an arc, it will be pointing directly outwards where you hit it. So let's hit play and take a look and see that we get a 0 and minus 1, which is directly up. Common uses for this function is to calculate reflection. However, there is a vector2 function that directly <laughs> allows you to get reflect, which is vector2.reflect. So we don't actually have to do that manually, but that, those are options for the collision normal. Next one up is the get collision position, and this will return the position of where you have collided. And this is not the position of the collision object, this is just the position of where you have collided, the point you have collided. So if I were to hit play now, we should get the point on the upper rightest corner here, which is 491. If I now were to tilt this body a little tiny bit by pressing E, and then slightly tilting it, towards the left, we will get the coordinate of this point when it hits. So it should be less than 491 in the x axis, and it is, it's 431. Next one up is get travel. This will return the last distant travel between the previous time this ran. So the previous movement is what will be returned right here. In order to get this, I'm going to indent it here, so it will print regardless if we're colliding or not. So let us now make sure to add a pass on the end here so it won't return an error like it is right now and let's hit play and now it returns 0 and 1 that's because we moved one previous frame however now it only returns 0 and 0 that's because the previous frame we have moved 0 because we are currently colliding with something 
and then we have revert motion which does as you'd expect it reverts the previous motion meaning now when we hit play we're going to move one and then this is going to undo one meaning we won't really move at all it's just gonna stand there because it reverts the motion then we have test move and test move will test the movement without moving and this is a relative vector it returns true if there would be a collection if it were to move meaning if i were to comment this out we're not actually going to move it's just going to check whether or not you would hit something if you were to move that amount so if i were to now increase this to 1000 this should return true immediately because we would collide if we were to move 1000 downwards then we have test move from this will test movement without moving the same as test move however this is position meaning you will need to get the accurate position in space to in order to test the movement in the same way you would use move to however test move from needs a matrix 32 or rather a transform which you can get by simply typing get and underscore transform inside your object and then the relative movement from that object so if i were to play again it will also return false until I were to change the vector to a thousand downwards which means we would collide if we were to move that amount. Lastly we have the collision margin to play around with and if we were to select the kinematic body we actually have the collision margin inside here and the collision margin is, is as it describes it's a margin outside the border of our collision shape it's invisible so if I were to enter 100 now you don't actually see the collision shape and you won't either even if you were to enable visible collision shapes when you play this so just to demonstrate this I'm going to set this to 100 and I'm going to hit play but before I do that I will need to remember to actually enable movement because we are not moving anywhere let us hit play once again now it moves down and it stops because we have collided the margin of our collision shape is 100 which is 100 pixels downwards which is quite a lot that is something you may or may not want to play around with and you can change that value inside code by just using set collision margin and then a value in float so by default it's 0 0.08 and you can of course get collision margin which will turn this margin i like the other function name this may be a bit misleading because when you get collision normal you're actually getting the collision normal of the object you hit However, get collision margin is you, yourself. It is not another of it, it is only you. And I believe that should cover the basics of the kinematic body 2D. It is of course up to you how you use these functions. And if you have any questions or you felt I left something out, please let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them if I can. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and would like to see more videos in the future. Then I hope to see you in a future video. Bye bye.